James Shelley. James is a researcher, a writer, a coordinator of the City Symposium, part-time fitness instructor, street-level social worker uh, with the Canadian Mental Health Association, and he's here to speak about compassion is an exit strategy. Please welcome James Shelley. Good evening. I would like to talk to you a few minutes this evening about social services in our community. And maybe to set the stage, I'll offer a premise on the table. What if, instead of going the route of bigger and better social services, we imagined a community, a society that did not need social services at all? And I don't just mean in like some utopian sense, I mean in like a pragmatic sense. What would that logistically look like? Well, first, maybe let's ask, fiscally speaking, what is poverty? In Canada, we determine poverty using a metric called the low income cutoff. It's determined 20% is determined by individuals who spend 20% more than the rest of the population on basic necessities. You can extrapolate that backwards and see that in our city, particularly, that low income cutoff averages back to around $1,600 a month for a single individual. Now, Let's say that if we were going to really take a, a bite out of poverty, we'd have to logistically look at how we can get as many people in our society as we can up to that mark. So remember that $1,600 a month line. And to kind of put it in perspective, there's someone who's making uh, 40 grand a year per month gross. And a little plug for the 99% here, if you're working 40 hours a week at minimum wage at 1025, you're just scraping over that line. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, that um, tomorrow a tragedy occurs, you lose your job, you go on unemployment, your unemployment insurance runs out. The next program you're going to be on is Ontario Works. Ontario Works is going to give you $585 a month maximum to live on. Now, you'll notice that $585 a month is significantly lower than low income cutoff line. So if low income cutoff is where we as a society says poverty happens, you're well below that. So let's say you're like, well, I'm going to try to make up the difference. So I'm going to try to do something that's going to generate another grand a month to try to let me have a decent standard of living. Well, Ontario Works is going to claw back 50 cents on the dollar you make from their income support, which means that even if you did that, you're still going to be well over $500 short of living at that low income cutoff line standard. Tragically, then, the system that we created forces people into this decision. Would you rather work really hard and have half of your income support taken away, or would you rather not work at all and have the equivalent of that amount simply given to you? Now, as a strategy to deal with poverty, Ontario Works is not working. Our exit to employment ratio for Ontario Works is somewhere between 11.9 and 14.1 percent. People also leave for other reasons, but this gives us an indication that a lot of people are getting sucked into a system and not getting out of it. So, because as soon as you are living on $585 a month, your life is spent between food banks, drop-ins, shelters, soup kitchens, health services, and support agencies. In other words, your full-time existence, let alone your full-time job, your full-time existence is accessing the services you need to survive. And that is our community. That's our meal calendar. Those are our health services. That's the world you're living in. So the tragedy of this is, in a nutshell, that we have created a system that means supporting people on the margins has created this complex reality that forces people to stay at the fringes, where they must struggle through a convoluted, congested, energy-draining labyrinth of programs in pursuit of emergency assistance. Now, we, f we, we feel bad about this because, it, well, it creates complexity for one. When we feel bad about it, we add another social service, we add another layer of complexity. Another social service demands more resources that people must expend to access those social services, and we incentivize the continued use of social services when we add them. So, we've been asking really good questions about how can we help people in poverty, and that's an important question. We must keep asking it. We also need to ask, though, how can we help people get out of poverty? And unless this question enters our paradigm, I think we're going to be in trouble as a society. I don't want to you know, make this sound like cold-hearted and crass or anything. That's not what I'm trying to get at. I, myself, am a social worker, so don't kick me when we're done. Uh, but I really think that if adding more and more to the system is not going to help. We need to think about some alternatives here. Alternatives that allow people to contribute to the scope of their individual personal capacity. In other words, inviting people to move from codependency 
on institutions and organizations to becoming interdependent contributors to the rest of society. If any of this strikes a chord, if you'd like to chat about it some more, uh, some of us have started uh, a, a, just an online discussion forum at exitstrategy.posterist.com. We'd love your thoughts and contributions if this is something that resonates you, with you and you'd like to chat more about it. Thank you.